Hey there, Peggy with Sew House 7. Welcome to the Free Range Slacks version 2 sewing tutorial. Jane's going to be conducting this tutorial, but I just wanted to address a few commonly asked questions that I get about choosing your fabric and choosing your size. Uh, first off, I want to say that there are two versions of this pattern. There's version 1 is a tapered leg that you roll the bottom hem, and version 2 that we're going to be doing today is a straighter leg. It's a little bit roomier leg and it's cropped. And both of them are basically constructed the same, but we've broken it into two separate tutorials because once version two, one tutorial is up, it's going to show you how to do the uh, flat felled seams so that when you roll up the bottom hem, you see a nice clean finished inside. But you don't have to do that for version two, so this tutorial we're going to show you the simplest way. Now, choosing your fabrics is pretty simple. I had linen in mind when I designed this, but you don't have to use linen. And in this tutorial, Jane's going to show you with a beautiful tensile twill from Merchant and Mills. Both of those fabrics have a little bit of fluidity, a little bit of drape, but not too much, which is really nice, especially with this version with the little bit wider leg. But I've also seen some really great versions in like a denim or a cotton twill, maybe even corduroy. As long as you don't choose something that's so stiff that the waist with the elastic gets too bulky or too heavy so that it pulls the elastic down or too light that it ends up looking like a skirt and being really clingy. But other than that, I think there's just a pant weight works. A medium weight, mid weight, pant weight is great. Now choosing your size, this is the most common question I get because most people don't fall into one size. Like your waist may be a size 10 and your hips might be size four and people want to grade between sizes. And I really don't think that's necessary with this pattern unless your waist is actually larger than your hips. And if you look at the finished garment measurements, I give you a waist measurement without elastic so you can see just how big it is, make sure that that fits over your hips. And I suggest choosing your size according to your hip measurement. And then just the elastic will take up the excess and um, I really don't think you need to grade between sizes for most instances. And I think that's it. So I'm gonna let Jane take it over now and I hope you enjoy sewing your pants and I hope you enjoy wearing them and I hope this tutorial is very helpful. Bye. Hello and welcome to the Sew House 7 YouTube channel. My name is Jane and I'll be showing you how to make version two of our free range slacks. Version 2 features a straight, cropped leg. I'm using a Tencel 12 from Merchant & Mills. This tutorial is meant to accompany the instructions provided with your pattern. Feel free to pause and skip to the content that is relevant to you as you work. This video is separated into two parts. Let's get started. First, we're going to finish the outer unnotched edges of the pocket edge facing and the inner unnotched edges of the front pocket. You can use a zigzag stitch, a surged edge, or trim them with pinking shears. To stay stitch, set your machine's stitch length to around 1.5 and stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Now we're going to pin our pocket edge facing to our front pant. Make sure the right sides are together and you're aligning your notches. Sew them together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Trim this seam allowance and press the seam towards the facing. Understitch the seam allowances down on the facing side. 
I'm doing this from the bottom so that you can see that I'm catching the seam allowances. Now we're going to take that facing, fold it to the inside, and press. Top stitch this 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge. Okay, this part can be kind of confusing, but just look at the notches and it'll make sense. We're essentially making our front pockets right now. to work on a flat surface for this part so that you can feel the piece underneath where you're pinning it. So I'm going to top stitch this by feeling the piece underneath but there's no shame in using the pocket template. You can also stitch it from the back. Getting a good pivot is important to the clean stitching lines on this pattern, so take your time and make sure that you're really lining things up. Keep your needle down, lift your presser foot, and turn. I happen to like the way that the second row of top stitching looks, but it's totally up to you. These basting stitches at the top and side of the pocket are crucial because they're going to make sure that our pocket doesn't shift when we attach it to the back piece. So just make sure that you are setting your machine stitch length to as long as the stitches will go, and then make sure that you put it back to your normal sewing length when you're done. So this is what your front pant should look like now. This little section of stitching is going to help with the pocket gapping. Basically what we're doing is we are closing the pocket down to this little curve. So just stitch on top of the stitching that's already there and make sure you backstitch and then you're done. If you're adding back pockets, you're going to start by turning down a quarter of an inch towards the wrong side and pressing. Now fold the pocket at the notches right sides together. It'll make sense in a second. Stitch that down 3 eighths of an inch from the edge on the side of the pocket that doesn't have a notch at the bottom. Okay, now using your zigzag stitch or your serger, finish the unnotched inner edge and the bottom. If 
press it. See, it makes sense now I told you. Now go ahead and also press those finished sides in 3 eighths of an inch. To get that really pro finish, we're going to top stitch this down one inch from the top edge. You can also stitch this from the back if you prefer. Okay, now let's put our back pocket on our back pant. Make sure your markings are on the right side of your fabric and that is where the corners of your pockets are going to go. Line up those side seam notches as well. And if you are going to do two back pockets, you might wanna do these side by side so that your pockets match. to edge stitch or top stitch that back pocket, your second row of top stitching is optional. This reinforcement is a really cool detail. If you look at your ready-to-wear garments, you will see the same stitch. That is really going to keep our pocket from pulling from the weight of whatever we put in it. Thanks for watching. We will finish these up in part two.